Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, God, for being who you are. You're great and you're mighty, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. If you know it, just help me sing it. To the glory of the Lord, rise among us. To the praises of our King, rise among us. To the glory of the Lord, rise among us. Let it rise. Oh. With a clapping of our hands, let it rise among us. With the clapping of our hands, let it rise among us. To the praises of our King, let it rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. To the glory of the Lord, let it rise among us. To the glory of the Lord, let it rise among us. To the praises of our King, let it rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. With the stomping of our feet, let it rise among us. With the stomping of our feet, let it rise among us. To the praises of our King, let it rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Come on, put your hands together in this place. We came to celebrate Jesus. Don't just sit there and look at me today. To the glory of, to the glory of the Lord. Let it rise among us. To the glory of the Lord. Let it rise among us. To the praises of our King. Let it rise among us. Let it rise. Oh. clapping of our hands let it rise among us with the clapping of our hands let it rise among us to the praises of our king let it rise among us let it rise oh, 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 oh. like you Jesus and that's why we ask you God to overflow in this place overflow in this place God show us something new God and we love you and we thank you God and we praise you hallelujah have your way hallelujah Nobody like you. Have your way. Overflow in this place. Have your way in this 
We want more. We want more in this Have way. your way, Lord. Have your way. Anybody want more? Overflow, overflow in this place. Have your way. Have your way in this place. We want more. We Anybody need an overflow? And then you just go, have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Need an overflow. In this place, we want more. We want more. Anybody want more? In this place, have your way. Hold up now. Let me see if y'all gonna keep singing. If it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. If it's not pleasing to you. Lord, take, take it out of me. me. If it's not pleasing to you, Lord, Deacon David, take it out of me. Have your way. One more time. Yeah, Lord. If it's not pleasing to you, Lord, take it out of me. If it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. If it's not pleasing to Take it out of me, Lord. Have your way. Yes, Lord. Oh. Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, 
I thank you for who you are. I decrease that you may increase in me, that you may have your way with your people. God, you are the source of my strength. I yield to your will and your purpose over my life. You are first in my life. And I thank you, even as you word these lips of clay, God, not only speak to your people, but God, speak to my heart. So that we will know your good and perfect will for us. As we celebrate this last Sunday before Christmas, Resurrection Day. Lord, you've been the reason for the season. I thank you in advance. As many of us are getting ready to celebrate you, God. We thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Look, if you would, Deacon Davis, I thank you so much for putting that up there. I promise I won't be. We may just get out a little bit early today, amen. Depends on, hallelujah, let the Lord have his way, amen. Amen. I was, we were going to do communion on today. I know I mentioned that to some of you all. Uh, but in light of a lot of other stuff uh, that's going on, I want us, we'll do it. New Year's Eve. The night that we bring in watch night service. Amen. Everybody okay with that? If you can be Amen. here. Joseph, you're going to be able to be here. Amen. If you, hallelujah. You're going to walk right in, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I tell you, when you shared your testimony, that's just to let everybody know in this room right now, they that way. See, you know, you remember when I, when I told you, I said, God going to give you the resources. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. See, sometimes we don't look at it and we're blindsided. Hallelujah. God will just... While you were sitting there just being humble and trying to get something started, and it's still like every starting point was a stumbling block, you just kept on being persistent even when it hurt it. Even when it hurt it. Even when it hurt it. God got a way of opening up a door you can't even see. You can't even see your door. You can't even see it. Hallelujah. God said, you know what, Pastor Charles, I just hear the Lord saying that every time we doubt as a Christian, he used that as water for your seed. He used that as water for your seed. Hallelujah. Because God knows that hallelujah it takes pressure. It takes pressure. It takes pressure to break something. It takes pressure to produce something. Nothing comes easy. It takes pressure. This oil, you just can go to the branch and squeeze it. You had to crush. God said, I'm using, I'm taking all of your doubt. All of the doubt. I'm going into the doubter's room. And I'm going to take all of that doubt. And I'm going to water that seed. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to water that seed. Somebody give God praise. I would, if you would, go with me. If I could use for a thought today, a star design just for me. <laughs> Ooh. 
a star designed just for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to adopt Pastor Charles, if he would. We're going to St. Matthew's chapter 2. The, 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 the thing that I like about this one, this chapter, this, this Matthew is the only gospel that speaks on the star. And so, and, and it plays a big role in the compass I was talking about earlier. How would I get there if I didn't know where to go? God designed a star just for me. My, I, I don't think some of y'all understand what I'm talking about because the reason why you're here today because that was a star. That's it. That's it. My God, my God, my God. That was a star that shined in your life that led you here on today. Amen. Begin reading for me, Pastor Charles. And I'm now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying, Where is he that is born the king of Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Listen, listen. Now, they had the wrong perception of who and what kind of king they were to be looking for. I believe that that blindsided them that led them to the palace. But he wasn't in the palace, but he was in a place. <laughs> Come on, read. When Herod, the king, heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded them where Christ should be born. Come on. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the east among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. See, the, the king had no idea what these men were talking about. So he inquired of his, of his the governors and the priests and the strives, what is this thing? What is that these things these men are talking about? Read for me. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. See, look at that. See, the king is very, trying to be very sneaky and crafty. In those days, if you caught disobeying orders, you would be beheaded and killed, not yep. only you, but you and your whole family. So on top of the fact that they were seeking Christ, they are between a rock and a hard place with orders that they must seek him diligently. Mm. Somebody say, but God. But God. Come on. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Look at that. So we thank you. All right, everybody can take a seat. I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going uh, to just want to talk a little bit because... We don't find any other instance in any other gospels where they're uh, mentioning the star. But so often we, we ride down the road and we see in yards in this season where there are, there's a baby inside of a manger. The key thing to where Jesus was in determining how old was he by the time these men got to him it has been under discussion and with many different scholars and and we can say that he was weeks and days old and all of this plays a big role in 
them getting to Jesus. But it's something about the star. And, and I wondered, I said, Lord, why did they lose sight of the star that led them thus far? It's something so often we can get our connection with God, but every once in a while, we'll lose sight of the star. Because sometimes we'll get comfortable in what we're doing. But I hear the Lord saying in him today, I designed a star just for you. And there's a reason why, there's a reason why that Certain seasons, you can't see that star because some of us, we deal with, again, we deal with seasonal breaches. But when we come out of those seasons, we see what we first left off at. It's something, it's, 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 it makes a lot of sense being inside of a building. No, we cannot see the star. But the star didn't just disappear when they went in that building, but because when they put their insight on the fact that he's, in the palace but Jesus was not in the palace there was not a king being born in the palace but there was a king born there was a king born and Jesus being a reason for that season if we go back a chapter before or we go to other books other gospels and they talk about Jesus and I, I love the way John, John just comes in. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. He just comes in and just says all this great stuff. Hallelujah. And he goes right in with the light. He describes Jesus as being the light. Hallelujah. And, and, and I think about that story pertaining to this story, the light. We got to understand that the star was put in place by the light, the light of Jesus Christ. So often in the Bible, you would see people seeing angels, but they will appear first as a star. And the star being so close to us, the star is bright. A star, if we look in the sky now, stars are in place and they move over time. But this star was ordered. This star was predestined. This star was positioned to move amongst those men. Nobody else could see the star. Look at what the king was saying. The king was saying, oh, when did the star appear? Nobody saw the star. Not even the scribes and the priests, not even anybody in position of authority or witchcraft, none of them people couldn't see the star. Oh, I, I like it. I, I can almost think that these men were confidants because these men, all three of them saw the same star. They saw the same vision. They followed the same star. Now understand the distance between where they had to travel from to where they were going. They traveled a great distance. They prepared luggage food not only did they prepare those things they prepared gifts for our king hallelujah they prepared gifts for our king and when we and when we know without a shot of a doubt that jesus being our main reason for the season we have got to follow the star the star means a lot what is the what, what does it mean when I see the star? What does it mean when you tell your friends that you used to hang out with a week ago that I, I decided I'm going to follow the star? I decided I'm going to follow Jesus. I decided to give my life to the Lord. Uh, you know what? You know what? You know what? I, I know we did that. Wait a minute, man. You just indulged in this with us the other day. What changes your mind today? Because I saw something. That disconnected me from reality. That disconnected me from who I used to be. That now I see a light. Ooh. Glory. Saw some of these men. They saw something. And they, they journeyed by following the star. 
I believe that this star was so bright that even in the morning sky, they was able to see the star. They was able to just, just follow the star. Hallelujah. And when they got close to Jesus, Ebo Shata, glory, hallelujah. Every time you decide to get close to Jesus, the enemy always try to blindside you. He try to blindside you. He try to blindside you by taking away the light. God said, I put a star inside of each of us. And when we see that light for ourselves, we can stand up and follow that star. God said, I will not lead you astray. There's a purpose for the star. There's a purpose for the star. There's a purpose for the star. We talk about the gospels in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We talk about how there was a bright light and an angel appeared. Some of us, may, some of us, some scholars believe that it was an angel behind that light. But when I think about Jesus and all that he's done for me, I see more to my star than meets the eye. I don't know about you, but it's something about my star that I see. And Jesus being the reason for my life, for the breath that I breathe, I know without a shadow of a doubt that hallelujah, I can do all things through Christ. Hallelujah. When I, you know, when I'm, I'm just going to back up just a little bit. I wrote down something in my notes on my phone because I was thinking, and a lot of times I do a lot of meditation on God's word when I, whenever he leads me somewhere. And I, I, I begin to think about the journey. Jesus' journey is just beginning. But one thing that we got to understand that every time there's a beginning for something, especially when it's great, the enemy is always going to try to do something to infiltrate something in your life. We have got to get to a place in time in our life where when we see our star, when we see Jesus in our life, we got to learn how to walk upright and keep it real with ourselves. I, I, I know I can't find him in the club because he's not in that club. Hallelujah. I know what I used to go. That star is not in that place neither. But we got to keep our eyes wide open because God has placed a star in our lives that we must follow the compass. Somebody say follow the compass. Let me go back. I want to read. I want to read something else in here. Verse ten says, "And they saw the star. They rejoice with exceedingly great joy." And I'm gonna go back up to verse nine. I'm gonna read this real quick. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. 10 says again, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they were come into the house, notice that, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. They not only worshipped him, and when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And look what God does. Y'all remember when the king said, look for them diligently. And when you find him, come let me know so that I can come worship the child too. He was up to something. Everybody that finds out you have given your life to Christ is not always on your side. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard your testimony. And yesterday you were baptized. And when you were leaving, the Lord told me to tell you that he's breaking stuff off of your life even as you speak. And I didn't understand that until you got up and testified about cancer. I see it breaking off of you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, 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 and it, is, it is important for us to understand that when we go into places, our minds have to be connected with the Lord. And the king tells, and, and, and the king tells those men that when you find him, let me know so I can come worship him too. But the king had his own shysky things to do. But we find these white men, wise men, at the chapter of verse 11 and verse 12 says, and bring, and, it's, and being warned of God in a dream. They should not return to Heron, to de and they departed into their own country another way. It, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing because, Charles, do me a favor. I, I, do me a favor. Read that verse because I, I, I heard something in that verse that I want you to read for me. I want to show you all something. Verse 12. Yeah, verse 12. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. You see, you see that? I want to show you something. He didn't say one of them. Each one of them were warned by God in a dream. I, I don't think y'all caught, that's why I wanted, I said, because I, I don't think I heard what I read, that, 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 that these three men were conducive. My God, my God, my God. Won't, I mean, I'm I, I, I can't believe this because this is God just simply saying that all three of y'all would dream the same dream. And be warned by the same God, hallelujah, not to go back and tell that king to go out another way. God said, I'll put a dream in you. Hallelujah. It don't matter if people say, oh, he's just a dreamer. Oh, yeah, I'll be Joseph. I'll be thrown in a pit. I don't care what you're saying. I'm a dreamer because I know the God on the inside of me is beaconing me to another place. It's oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God said, look, I know the enemy has been trying to take you out, but the devil is a liar. I'm going to send you out another way. Listen, it don't say an angel. It said God himself came in their dreams and begin to speak to them minister to their heart not to go back that way but i want you to take the long way home sometime we gotta take the long sometime we gotta take the long way home it may seem like the worst way but if god said go that way when i can see the place that way it's to save your life. My God, my God, my God. Now listen. Listen. He sends an angel to speak with Mary. He sends an angel to speak to Joseph. He sends an angel, hallelujah, to speak to those, hallelujah. Even, even, even Jesus' auntie, Mary's auntie, hallelujah, even sends an angel to speak to them, John's mother. But I'm here to tell you something today. That is something about when God steps on the scene himself. Just say, wait, wait a minute. I need to deliver this message. I 
I need for them to understand it no more. I'm not going to use the star to speak to you. I'm going to come down off my throne and meet you in your sleep. And I'm going to speak to your heart. God said, I'm going to meet you in your sleep. God said, look, your dream is just not a dream. He will reveal your dream. Just listen and be aware. That's something. Because when I go down to verse 13, it says, and when they were departed, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Why, 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 why? Man. In their dream. Here it is, the angel appearing in their dreams. But God decided to speak to those wise men in a dream. <laughs> Man, y'all, y'all, somebody need to give God praise right now. Because sometime sending a messenger is not enough. We're gotta get to a point. Wait, 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 wait. I need to do this because this is my beloved son. I need to set a new course. I need to give them a head start. Oh. I got a few more minutes. I want. I, I, I want. I, Holy Spirit, have your way. Because there's something real deep about that. I got any dreamers in the house today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And and look and look and look. This is what the angel, the angels are a messenger. The angels are messaging to Joseph in the dream saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek that young child to destroy him. God said. See some of us we don't take heed to the word. Hallelujah. We'll get so comfortable and relaxed and be like I don't feel like moving right now. But I hear the Lord saying hallelujah. I spoke to you. Verse 14 says, and when he arose and he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and it was in, in, in was there into the death of Herod and that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying out of Egypt, I have called my son. Somebody need to give God praise. Hallelujah. Because out of a bad place, I've called my daughter between a rock, hallelujah, and a hard place. I've called my son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want everybody standing. Let's give God praise. Everybody in this place means a lot. But there are some people positioned to try to block and stop a lot of things. I must say this. The moment the king heard about Jesus... He positioned himself to destroy this prophecy. 
everybody ain't going to be happy for you when they hear good things about you. You see, listen, let me, you hear me, I'm going to hear me real closely. Because if I come to share good news with you, it may cause you to be jealous or envious. You might want to be and wish that you were that person or win that shoe. But I'm reminded of John the Baptist that when Jesus came down out of the mountain of being challenged, he said, there's one coming after me whose laces I am not worthy to tie. It's something, hallelujah. You see, we, 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 and, and, and if, and John the Baptist born around the same time Jesus was, but John was already doing ministry before Jesus was doing ministry. Here's the thing about that. But there was no jealousy because everything was predestined. Predestined. Jesus and John, they met in their mother's womb. And here's the thing about that, 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 that when, when they met, the babies leaped with a seemingly great joy. And here's the thing, I want everybody in here to understand this key principle. Whatever God put in your heart and you see that as a star to guide you, don't let anything detach you from that star. Because I'm going to tell, tell you about the star that's inside of you. It brings purpose. It brings provision. And it brings life. It connects you with God in ways that no man and no other person can break. And when you're connected like that, Minister Harris, when you, every time the enemy blow at you, I may got a bad knee, but I'm still standing. And I want to say in here to somebody that you didn't come here just because coming will make everything okay. You came because you wanted God to disconnect you from something. You've been trying to do it yourself. You worked it with your hands, you worked it with your mouth, you worked it with every ounce of energy that you had. But every word from your mouth wasn't a good word. Everything that you've done with your hands was not always crafty. But there's something that you want God to just remove from your heart, remove from your life. That God, I, I lost sight of my star years ago. I had a vision of being this person. I had a vision of being this kind of individual. But I lost sight of it. I lost sight of it. Because I was more concerned about me. Come on, you got to keep it real with yourself. Hallelujah. But in spite of everything else, I know that God, that you are the great provider. When I lost sight of my star, God, you brought purpose in a dark place. And here's the thing. That even while you were lost, God showed you a star. God put somebody around you and caused that star to begin to twinkle. Hallelujah. And, and, and then you begin to see purpose all over again. God said, I am that star. And here's the thing, Pastor Charles. 
Until you are willing to come out of that dark place, you will never see the star. Somebody need to give God praise right now because... Your star is starting to shine even now. Your star is starting to manifest even now. Even as I speak right now, there's a star. You know, I, I, I know one thing, Pastor Charles, is that when we think about the stars that are out in space, Some say they are planets. Some say they are suns. Because their light is twinkling. The brighter it is, the bigger it is. The bigger it is. Hallelujah. And so it's something about it. It talks about how hot it is. Until we connect with God Hallelujah, that thing is still going to stay in our lives because that star needs to burn, that star needs to lead us. And when that star, when you start seeing that star again to follow Jesus, I tell you, everything that's unlike him will begin to burn off of him. Will begin to burn off of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody needs something for God to burn off of them. That even when I come out on the brightest days, I'll still see my star. I'll still follow you, Jesus. Even when my days are going good and everything is just up, uppity for me, I'm still going to follow you, Jesus. We have to get to that point in our lives that we have to say to ourselves that no weapon that is formed against me shall be able to prosper. Somebody give God praise right now. Hallelujah. I want to pray over you right where you're standing. I'm trying to hear that song that you're playing. Did that Lord give me you? hearts right now and why he's playing that real softly I want you to lay hand on yourself right where you're standing at right now because and I want to pray with you Father, right now, I'm asking that you would touch those that are in this place, those that are at home in their living room, dining rooms, even their rooms, that is watching us even now, God. I'm asking that you would touch right now from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. God, whatever need in their life right now, God, you meet it. meet their needs right now. Let your sweet Holy Spirit rest in their lives even now, God. So many of us have lost sight, but God, I know that you are the reason for this season today. You are the reason why we're still breathing. You are the reason we are still here. 
You have given us the strength to fight. You have given us the strength to move on. And what doesn't kill us, God, it makes us stronger. It makes us wiser. So I thank you, God, for the life and the legacy. I thank you, God, for being a star in their lives on today. That same Jesus star. That same star that led those wise men to your son. I thank you, Lord, for producing a star in each of us that we may find our way when we make up in our minds to come back to you. I thank you, Lord, because all things are being made new even now. You are the source of our strength. Hallelujah. As we thank you and as we praise you and as we pray to you on today, God, we just want to just put our, come on, put your hands together and just worship him. And just worship him. Just worship him. Just worship him. Just worship him. Thank you, Jesus. 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 A star designed just for me. Anybody got what they wanted from the Lord on today? Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you, I hope it's not too late. I hear the Lord saying it ain't too late. Give me you, everything else. Go ahead, go ahead, Pastor Charles. Give me you. Listen, I want y'all to listen. I want you to repeat after me while you're standing there. Because. I want to do a church too. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Before I do what I was gonna do next, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that after I'm gonna do right here. Amen. I want you to repeat out to me because if we're going to be right before the Lord, we gotta keep it real. I'm gonna repeat out to me, say, Lord, forgive me. Come into my heart and in my life and be my Lord and Savior. I admit I am not right and you are the one that I need. Take over. Take over. Take over my failures. Take over my setbacks. Take over right now, Lord. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give God praise for that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And now, I want to say this. I want to open the doors of the church. If you're not a member of Redeemed Faith Fellowship, I want to open the doors of the church. This brother said, this brother said, oh, yes. <laughs> Somebody say, oh, yes. Somebody say, oh, yes. <laughs> Look, man, you put an O with that and then a yes with that. There's a whole lot of songs that go with that. Oh, how I love Jesus. You got all those songs. Amen. Look, I want you to let everybody know your name. Um, Brother Eric Middleton. Yeah. Anything else you want to say, Middleton? I'm just, uh, I'm happy to be here. I've been here for like maybe about three, four Sundays. I came here once before and did this, but God hadn't released me from where I was at. Mm -hmm. So I needed to do things correctly and in order. You know, so I need to be released from where I was at so I can come here and start what God wants me to do here. So the men are coming back. 
The men will be coming back. We're starting a men's group here in February. So the men are going to be coming back. Men are going to take their rightful places in the house of God. Watch and see what God, how God moves. Amen. Oh, Deacon Eric Middleton. Amen, amen, amen. And, and we always, we always like to make that official even here in Redeemed Faith Fellowship, you know, so we'll recognize you as a deacon, Deacon Middleton, amen. And, you know, if God will to promote you, forgive me if I ever call you deacon still. I do that, sometimes I do also like that, amen. You know, but I think I'm getting more used to it now, Amen. And I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, if you, I wanna, I just put something on my hand. Up. I wanna give you the right hand of fellowship. <laughs> we wanna offer you the right hand of fellowship here at Redeemed Faith Fellowship Church. Me and my lovely wife, Pastor Charles. Hallelujah. Amen. We got to practice that. Amen. Welcome to Redeem Faith Fellowship Middleton. Amen. God bless you. Whatever you see fit to do. Amen. We got the head deacon back there dressed in red. Amen. He's already on fire with the Lord. And then we got uh, Deacon Eugene and Deacon Davis and Deacon is Davis right here. Amen. So there's a lot of deacons in here. Amen. And we welcome you. Go ahead. Honey. Amen. Somebody give God praise. I can't wait till February come. Uh, I can see God doing some great things. 